Okay, so this is the next part on my series of tutorials to model this clock. And the part we're going to be modeling now is this battery compartment. We've already cut the hole in it, as we did in the prior session. So now, I'm going to start off with creating a cube. Going to the back view, switching to wireframe view, and scaling it to fit in that hole, like I said, we previously cut. There we go. So, since this is probably the most complex shape of this model, I'm going to model it separately from all the other items in the scene. So to do that, I want to hide them. Like I did with the image planes, I'm going to create a new display layer so I can toggle their visibility and in invisibility. So I'm opening up the layer slash channel box. Go to create, empty layer, change the name, I'm calling it body, save, and add all the items except the cube we just created to that layer. Turn off the visibility, and now we can proceed with modeling. Now the first thing I'm going to do is bevel this object's corner so it matches the one in our reference image. I'll select all the edges. Remember, we only want the edges along the cor corners. And now, we're going to use our good friend bevel to round them off. That's probably too round, so I will select it, open up the attributes editor, go to poly bevel 2, and reduce the offset to about 0 0.26, I believe. Yeah, it's pretty close to the real life counterpart. So now the next thing I'm going to do is make the little spot for the battery to sit. So to do that, I need to add an edge running across this model horizontally. Probably the quickest way to cut that in would be using the appropriately named Cut Face tool. Now the Cut Face tool basically allows you to add slices across geometry. And in this case, I want to add a slice about a quarter of the way up from the bottom. Running, of course, horizontally. Click and drag, then release. You want to get it as straight horizontally as you can. Now the next thing I want to do is extrude some faces. So I'm going to extrude the top faces forwards. Now that I have the faces selected, Edit Mesh Extrude. Once again, this is all on the Polygon menu set. Pull it forwards. Just a bit. Okay, so now I'm going to make the battery, I mean, the compartment for the battery itself. It has a bit of a lip, so we're going to need two extrusions to make it. Select the faces below that edge that we cut. If I can just get this one eighth face. Then go to Edit Mesh Extrude, and I'm going to scale them, not using the Extrude Manipulator, just the normal Scale tool bring in a bit from the side and a bit for the top to create a nice rim. Now we're going to go to Edit Mesh Extrude again and sync it into the model. That's where the battery will, will sit. Up next is the little spot for this wheel. To do that we're going to need out a vertical slice and a horizontal slice. Since, th since this is a ra rather complex model, we will be simplifying the shape quite a lot. We'll adding that vert vertical slice, once again, using the cut face tool. And you know what, I'm going to undo that and bring it over just a bit. There we go. And now I'm going to add the horizontal slice. It should be just about at the grid line. And there we go. Here's what the model looks like so far. Pretty simple. Now I'm going to go to face mode, select all these faces, then edit mesh, extrude again, and pull forwards. So now we've basically created the base geometry. Now we're going to improve it. The first thing I want to do is round this corner off like as in the real life counterpart. Go to edge mode, Select the edge in that corner, might have to zoom in to see it, 
then go to Edit Mesh, Bevel. Really, the default options work quite well here. Now, I should also mention these aren't the completely default options. I have the segments set to 4, but the offset and everything else is left at the default. That looks pretty good, so I think I'll leave it at that. Leave it at that. So now we need to create that wheel which sits inside this little indentation we made. It's a pretty complex shape, but we're going to find a way to do it. I'm going to start off with creating a cylinder. I want the axis divisions to be 30, and we'll just leave the radius and the height at 2. Scale it down a bit, drag it up here, and we're not actually going to be modeling it on the object, we're going to be modeling it up separately, so it's easier to see, and it's just easier to locate yourself when it's in the center of the scene still. So, to do this, I'm going to select all the vortexes around the rim, deselect the center one, don't want that, just the ones around the rim. Now, I'm going to go to Edit Mesh, Extrude. Yes, you can extrude edges, I mean vortexes, in Maya. Now, right now this looks pretty hideous, so I'm going to open up the attributes editor, which is already open, set the length to zero, and leave all the other properties alone. Now, make sure you don't change your selection and accident, accidentally deselect the vortex, vortexes. And we're going to switch over to the Move tool. With the Move tool, I'm going to drag the vortexes up, creating the kind of textured edge that this wheel has. Now, I'm going back to Object Mode. We can deselect it now. And it's kind of smooth, as you can see in the shading. I'm not sure how well you can see it in the video, but it's a very smooth edge. We want it to be a sharp edge. Now what's creating this is the normals. The normals dictate a smooth edge from a sharp edge. So to make this look better, I'm going to go to normals, set normals angle, and this value of 30 basically tells Maya any edge with, a, with an angle over 30 should be hard, any edge with an angle under 30 should be smooth. Like the edges around this object need to be smooth, but the edges for these peaks here need to be hard. So click OK. And now this is much closer to our original object we're trying to copy, but we need a little indentation here. To do that, we're going to go to Boolean Modeling, just like we did with the body of the clock. I've created a cube. I'm going to scale it to about the size of the hole we need. Scale a bit bigger, maybe. Yeah. Now I'm going to go to Edge Mode and select all the edges except for the top rim then go to Edit Mesh Bevel. Now, the only attribute I want to change here, select it, open up the attributes editor, is the segments. I'll be setting that to 1. It's sort of a rough hole anyway, so we don't need the extra edges. And we'll slide it into the model. Make sure you don't go all the way through the model. We just want it sitting inside it. Then, we select our wheel, our cutting object, Mesh, Boolean's Difference. Now that that's done, you've probably noticed that the pivot point of this object is no longer in the center of the scene. I mean, it's no longer in the center of the object, it's in the center of the scene. To fix that, go to Modify, Center Pivot, and now we can proceed with moving and scaling it to fit in the space allotted for it, which is right up in here. We're also going to have to rotate it 90 degrees. Now, rotating it by eye is not an accurate enough way to rotate it 90 degrees. What you should do is, when the object's selected, go in the Attributes Editor, go to the first tab of all these other tabs you have, and set the rotate value to negative 90. That means it's exactly 90. It's not an eyeballed number with a whole bunch of decimal points to get in the way. It's, tr it's a good idea to leave decimal points out of rotation. Scale down a bit more. Move, position, adjust. Just scaling it. It should sit flush with the surface. Okay, so now we've got that wheel. Last but not least, the battery and its connectors. So to make them, I'm going to create another cylinder. Scale it. Rotate it, once again ensuring that it's exactly 90 degrees by using the attributes editor. Position it 
positioning it. Switching the wireframe view so I can see this a little better. That looks about right. I think a bit smaller actually. Smooth shaded. Okay, so now we need to clean up the edges around our battery. Right now, it's a solid edge. We want to bevel that edge, just like we did this edge here and the rest of the model. So, we could spend time and select every single edge all the way around this point, but that would take a while. Because they go all the way around an item, we can take advantage of edge loops, which basically means Maya will select all these edges because it knows they're following um, a specific order, you could say. So I'm going to go to the select, remember this is on the polygon menu shelf, select, select edge loop tool, I double click on one edge, and it selects all the edges around that point. I repeat the task on the opposite side, you don't need to hold shift, it will add it to the selection regardless. And now we have those two edges selected. Edit mesh, bevel, and we're going to reduce the offset significantly. About 0 0.05 is what I've got. It's actually closer to 6. And there's our battery. Now the last thing we need to do is the connectors. So I'm going to create a cube. By the way, you've probably uh, understand by now this type of modeling is commonly referred to as box modeling because most of this geometry comes from boxes. It's also known as modeling using primitives because all the geometry I'm using, with the exception of the body, was generated from primitives. Primitives are stuff like cubes and cylinders. I'm actually going to vortex mode to scale this battery connector. And now I'm going to select the front face of that cube we just created. One second. Go to extrude. Move it forwards and a bit to the left. So it's slightly angling into the battery making the connection. Now, we need to mirror it to the opposite, opposite side of the battery. So what I'll do is select it, go to Mesh, Mirror Geometry. I want to mirror along the negative ax X axis, and I don't want to merge it with the original. Click Mirror, and right off the bat you notice something's wrong because it just stuck it to the back side of the other connector. So what, what I'm going to do is, once again in the Attributes Editor, set the pivot to zero. So that cleans that up and properly shifts it to the opposite side of the model. Now that that's done, we can redisplay the rest of the items in the scene and see how it looks. Right now it's not quite flush with the surface, so what I'll do is I'll select everything, the battery, the wheel, the connectors, and move them back. Make sure they sync right in. They want, you want them to sit flush. So, make sure it's not going through. It is just a bit. So I'm going to go to vortex mode on this, I mean, excuse me, vortex mode in the back of the object that our case is supposed to sit in. Slide that back to make sure it doesn't protrude through. And we're good now. So, that concludes this, this part of the series. Save it as part 4 and wait, watch the next tutorial